And here is the champion backstage in his dressing room, 21-year-old Felix Trinidad. Very talkative, moments away from his third defense of the IBF welterweight, the crown, as he takes on former three-time world champion Hector Camacho. Three down and two to go in our super grand slam of boxing as we turn our attention to Felix Trinidad versus Hector Macho Camacho for the IBF welterweight championship. We are back with the fight, Doctor, and you know there's a, a lot more at stake tonight than just the welterweight title, the IBF. Well, there's a lot of pride going on here. For Camacho, he has taken a career that should have put him in the Hall of Fame and sort of squandered it with foolish activity and, uh, and more entertainment than boxing. Uh, in Puerto Rico, he's not considered among the great fighters, and he wants to be because he's got a pretty decent career going. He has to win here to look good, or else it's almost the end of his opportunity to look good. For uh, Felix, Felix is such a hot shot right now. If he wins here and wins big, he's got Chavez ahead of him. And he will be an idol in, in Puerto Rico, who they consider him already the inheritor of the great Gomez or Carlos Ortiz. They consider him the great next guy. Big, very big fight for Camacho here. Very big. Maybe the end of his career for big money fights if he doesn't win well. Now, Ferdy, recently Camacho had a run in with the look, and he put personal problems aside tonight. Well, you have to know that he's been in trouble with the law, I think, since I've known him. He is used to having process service, sheriffs, and people with shotguns outside his house. Nothing bothers this guy. When the lights go on, it's macho time. The only thing that bothers him is what's he wearing, where are the cameras, and how does he get on? Macho time means I'm on camera, it's me. That's the only thing that matters. So no matter if they got an army of deputies outside waiting for him, it doesn't bother this kid. Macho is an entertainment fighter. All right, then there's the subject of Camacho's experience in championship bouts versus Trinidad's relative inexperience. Will that be a factor in this matchup, Bob? Steve, I see it as being the biggest factor in this fight. As we saw in the Anthony Stevens fight, Trinidad is a little susceptible. Does go down, does get hurt, is hittable. Camacho has much better speed, but the experience in big fights where the adrenaline, where the crowd, where all the aura of the big fight get to some young fighters, where they overexert themselves early. Camacho's been there. He's fought them all, including the legendary Chavez. He's got everything he has to have emotionally and mentally. Now, does he have it physically? Well, he has tried his best to convince me that we are seeing the resurrection of Hector. And the way I see it right now, he's the best 3-1 to one underdog I've ever seen. He was very humble and pensive when we spoke to him yesterday. The two fighters have made their way into the ring. This is the challenger, the flamboyant Hector Macho Camacho, the 31-year-old uh, former three-time world champion, born in Bayamón, Puerto Rico, grew up in New York City and lives in Florida now. 44-2 and two with 21 knockouts, rated number eight by the IBF as a welterweight. And now here's the champion. 21-year-old Felix Trinidad out of Cupe Alto, Puerto Rico, climbing fast. Tonight, already his third defense of the IBF welterweight crown. He looked impressive in his first defense, stopping Luis Garcia in the first round, but struggled in his second defense, although he stopped Anthony Stevens in the 10th, lifting his record to 22-0 with 19 KOs. Let's check the numbers as we go to the tail of the tape. Much uh, disparity. Trinidad at 21 is 10 years younger than Camacho. The four and a half inch height advantage for Trinidad, and you can see the weight is all even. Each checking in at 147, Trinidad with a three inch reach advantage. And to the IBF rules for this championship fight, 10 point must system, three scoring judges, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can stop the fight, and a fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. So here at the MGM Grand Garden, we are closing in on the IBF welterweight championship, Felix Trinidad versus Hector Macho Camacho. Let's go back to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Well, fans, we welcome you to our second world title feature bout in the Super Grand Slam of Boxing, brought to you by Don King Productions and King Vision in association with SET, Pay-Per-View, Corona, and the MGM Grand. And at this time, we present the IBF Welterweight Championship of the World. This bout is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, the President Bob Lee, Supervisor Alvin Goodman, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the Chairman is Dr. Elias Ghanem. Introducing to you the judges at ringside, Mike Gliena, Glenn Hamada, and Dalby Shirley. Presenting to you at this time, the referee in charge of the bout, Joe Cortez. 
All right, fans, here we go with the IBF Championship of the World, the welterweight division, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing red, white, and blue trunks, fighting out of Bayamon, Puerto Rico. He weighed in at 147 pounds, and his record includes 44 wins, only one loss, one no contest, with 21 wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked the number eight welterweight contender by the IBF. Please welcome tonight's challenger, the three-time world champion, the colorful Victor Macho Camacho. opponent across the ring on my right is the defending champion fighting out of the red corner. He enters the ring wearing white trunks trimmed with the Puerto Rican flag and hailing from Cupe Alto, Puerto Rico. He weighed in the same weight of 147 pounds. His unblemished record includes 22 wins, no losses, with 19 big wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the rising young star of the welterweight division, the undefeated IBF welterweight champion of the world, Felix Tito Trinidad. Once again, here's your referee in charge, Joe Cortez. Okay, Hector. All right, second. Felix. Okay, that you lady la regla en camerino a los dos. Quiero una pelea limpia. I gave you both the rules. Give me a both. Give me a clean fight. Take hands. Clearly as animated a macho man as we've seen in the several fights we've covered involving Hector Camacho. I think Hector's very serious. He understands. He understands the importance of this fight. He understands the opportunity. He has the experience. He has the talent. He should be able to teach this green kid a lesson. But the green kid is not just a green kid. It's a green kid with a cannon in his glove. So let's see what happens. A most interesting fight. Round one scheduled for 12 for the IBF Waterway Championship. Felix Trinidad, for him to succeed, he's got a guard against getting frustrated by Camacho, which many fighters have succumbed to in the past. If Trinidad is impressive tonight, the rising star status and high expectations would be justified. Camacho moving up to the welterweight division is ring wise. He knows all the tricks. He could give Trinidad problems. I think the speed as well as that experience are going to come into play here very early. We'll see if he gets frustrated, the young champion. We'll see if Camacho is very effective early. Also, being a southpaw can't help. That adds there again. You'll see that southpaw style is going to add some frustration. He jumped in from the right side, hit champion with a quick shot and in and out he's gone these first rounds ought to be completely completely uh camacho dominated because of his speed and his experience he's been a multiple champion he knows he's been here and uh that's an awful lot to put on the line against a kid that's just barely arrived and he knows how to fight defensively as well he's a master in that area he told us even in the shape i was for chavez i could beat trinidad Camacho told uh, told us Chavez couldn't knock me out with the kitchen sink, so Trinidad won't get to me. But Camacho shouldn't underestimate Trinidad's punching power. Should point out uh, Camacho has never been knocked out. I think the way that Chavez cut off the ring and walked Camacho around, I think that was key for the way Camacho lost. Trinidad doesn't cut the ring off or close with that kind of pressure, so that's all in Camacho's favor here. Camacho said he doesn't feel Trinidad punches as hard as Chavez. Plus, Felix doesn't apply as much pressure as Chavez. And uh, Hector feels that will be to his advantage. Well, guys, this is just starting up. And right now, all we got is Macho running, running, running. He hasn't been doing an awful lot of fighting. Who could you give this round to? Nobody's done anything so far. They're just feeling each other out. Like, for the first time, they've tangled toes. And you're gonna see that all night long with a left-hander and a right-hander. Camacho's landed a few jabs. Uh, there have been some glancing blows hitting both men, but right now very light. Maybe a slight edge to Camacho, but this is this is where judging a fight of this nature becomes very, very objective. 
Well, for, for openers, Felix has got to throw something to take this round if he's going to take it at all because the only guy throwing anything is Camacho. Well, he's throwing it into the air. He has landed a few glancing blows. So far, the only thing you could judge is. In light of the fact that it's such a big fight, monumental fight for a Felix Trinidad, do you think, you know, there's a tendency to show a little tightness on his part here in the first round? Well, I don't think he's ever seen anybody like, uh, like Camacho. It's going to take him two or three uh, rounds to, to get used to the excellence of uh, Macho Camacho and then get down into his kind of fighting. Time! We did by booze because the audience, like us, wanted to see some action and didn't see it. Tito, let's listen. Oye, Neto, no brinque tanto, ¿sabes? Porque yo quiero como más cintura y camino, ¿oíste? Seguimos así, ¿oíste? Con turno dos de, de repetición, estamos hechos. Tengan la confianza, nos ganamos. They're very calm here. In this corner, they're very satisfied with Macho's work. Macho has uh, taken that round as far as they're concerned, as far as I'm concerned also. And, uh, so it's round two. Camacho brings ring smart, speed, superb, but technical skills and three world titles into the fight. Some feel he is in a must-win situation against a man almost 10 years his junior. Trinidad also cat-like. Quick, sharp, calm, patient with knockout power in both break, hands. Break, break, Phoenix. Phoenix well, Joe Cortez yelling, break, 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 but Felix kept hammering away. Fighters that uh, come in real quick, bum, bum, boom, hit you two, three quick easy shots and then hold you are extremely frustrating. And there you can see Trinidad banging on the side, but when the referee says to stop and break, that's when you got to stop punching on the inside. Like this. But he got in four good shots. See, see that stepping on the foot? Exactly what we said in the first round. They opened this round with that. He stepped on Macho Camacho's foot. You can't help it. It's right up there. He's very tall. He's, he puts his foot up to, to charge, and there's Macho's foot. He's going to step on it. That's one of the awkward parts of boxing with Southpaw again. You'll see, again, he's stepping on his feet on a regular basis. And this is something that's going to work right now. The reach and the height to Trinidad's advantage, as well as he doesn't do the moving. Trinidad 5'11", a 70-inch reach. Camacho 5'6 and a half, a 67-inch reach. Camacho threw the first really serious intent to hurt punch just then and missed it by a mile. But at least Macho's trying. At this point, Macho is pursuing rather than the other way around. That's There's exactly that. right. Look who's backing up now. There's a trickle of blood left eye of Felix Trinidad. Oh, boy. This is just starting, and now he's got another problem. He's got blood coming out of the corner of his eye. It's over the, the eye, not in a good place, right at the corner of the eye. That's going to bleed all the way through. Tough to stop those. Tough to stop that. Trinidad has never lost 22-0 with 19 knockouts, nine straight KOs, third highest knockout ratio of all present world champions. It would be a shame to see a cut like this factor in so that Trinidad can't fight his fight or that fight would get stopped because I don't think it was a clean punch. It had to be somewhere in that little bit of uh, holding and wrestling that hits banged accidentally. I never saw a good clean shot that could have done what that cut no, like it has had. I think that was a headshot. I think that was a headshot. Left hand missing by Camacho. Showing the quickness of Trinidad. And now it's Trinidad on the attack and Camacho going back as we figured it would be for the whole fight. Oh, nice right hand by Trinidad. Not a lot of steam on it, but he got to him. And a countering left by Hector Camacho. Swing and a miss at the bell. Let's see if we can. He just asked, cut, and he said, yeah, but it's very little. We'll take care of it. Now let's see how they take care of it. At first, it's a pressure by that gauze, and he's got to leave it there a little bit longer than that. You got pressure is more important than any gunk you put in it. Pressure and holding it. Now he just told him, don't, don't get desperate because you get cut. Now let's look, look at the way. Look, there you go, there. You see his, his foot right on top of uh, uh, Camacho? That makes Camacho get off balance. At some point, he's going to be able to uh, use that to his advantage. He missed there. This probably is a cut, Bobby. Take well, I'll tell you what. I think they, 
I think they had a bang hit somewhere along in here. Possibility of, uh, you know, just swinging an elbow. Could have been anything. Well, the one thing they told him in the corner, we can take care of it. It's very little. Don't let it affect you. But I tell you what, what's affecting him is Camacho's ring mastery right now because so far he's won the first two rounds on my card unofficially because he's just doing better boxing. Well, I agree with you. I think right now he's carried the little bit of the action to Trinidad a little better, a little more effective. Trinidad's confused, but I think what Trinidad, Trinidad has to stop worrying about is all the little punches. He's going to get hit with some of them. Walk through and try and land some bombs, hit him to the body, slow some things down. He can't block every shot of a fighter that's quick. It's just not going and, and if he thinks, if he has a hope that Macho Camacho is going to slow down, he is wrong. Macho will do this for 12 rounds. Trinidad has a little respect for Camacho. He ranked his top three Puerto Rican fighters. Camacho not among them. He listed Wilfredo Gomez, Wilfred Benitez, and Carlos Ortiz. And you have to wonder if many of his fellow Puerto Ricans share the same opinion. They do for the simple reason that the Puerto Ricans are a great fight country and they pride themselves on the bravery of their fighters. You couldn't fight with any more guts with Alfredo Gomez or Carlos Ortiz or Jorge Torres or Go Gonzalez. It's just a, a raft of great, great Puerto Rican fighters. And when uh, Macho came in, could have been that kind of fighter and chose show business instead, they, they just despised him for a while. It's almost ironic they call him the Macho Man because his type of fighting style is not that of a macho man. Yeah, that's the exact antithesis. He's always liked to live out the macho image he has projected outside the ring. But uh, he went too far recently having a run-in with a police officer. Well, I've had occasion to socialize with him and outside the ring, he does do his best to live up to just that image. Well, he served a six-month house arrest to avoid a 90-day jail sentence and served 200 hours of community service down in Florida. He could not leave his house without his lawyer. It was a leniency to let him train. He set up training camp at his house. It's the first time in the history of boxing where you think a, a penalty of legal kind could improve your chances of winning a title, and it certainly has. But he's doing a very good job here, although... Felix is now picking it up this round. Felix, Trinidad. A good left hand. He hit him with a good left hand and then followed him with a lead right. And he caught Camacho dead on the butt. And look at the way Camacho ran and grabbed. And Camacho a little bit of problems here. Remember, Camacho's never been stopped or knocked out. He's never faced a cannon like this kid. All of a sudden, a burst from Felix Trinidad here on the third round, final seconds. And a big change in the tide here. The flood waters are coming on for Macho Camacho. And Trinidad wants more after the... So much battle continues even after the bell. Look at that. Cortez doing a good job, but he, he had to separate them forcefully. Round four. Keep in mind, Camacho, in September of 92, went the distance with Julio Cesar Chavez. He was severely punished by Julio, but he remained on his feet the entire way, somewhat of a moral victory. And now, Camacho is shaken up. And now, what is it? Is it a timeout? Run? I think he thumbed him in the eye or butted him. Yeah, it's the left eye of Hector Camacho. Decision here. Camacho looking like he, he, he will not continue if, if not given the time. Oh, he will. He will. All right, he tries to clear out that left eye. Uh, Cortez just stood firm, said you will continue to fight. Well, if he doesn't continue to fight, even if it's an out-and-out -out foul, he has to continue when the fight's over. Well, that was a precarious moment there. Good thing that we have a good, strong referee like Joe Cortez told him, you got to fight. You can no more time. I wonder what this does to the confidence of Trinidad. It's got to boost it a little. Well, I think that last round boosted him pretty good. He knows that if he hits him, he's going to get him in trouble. You'll start to see some more lead right hands, the right hand that was effective in the last round. But also, you might see Trinidad get a little more anxious, miss some big shots, and then get tired. So it could work both ways for him. Uh, Trinidad's got to throw something. 
I mean, Bobby, he's got this guy running. He's got this guy scared. I won't the word scared doesn't, I don't want to use it that way. He's got this guy cautious. Uh, Macho Camacho's cautious. He's felt the sting. He's felt the thumb, you know. And Camacho comes back with a left hand. Trinidad has a reputation of starting out slowly, being calm, waiting for his moment, but he might be too composed right now. He should go in. That's another nice little life left hand off the uh, cheekbone of Camacho. He's trying to time Camacho, something that is extremely difficult to do. He's so quick, it's difficult to time him to counter him. So he has to do his pressing, enforce some mistakes, force some action, and get a slugfest going. what the macho man needs to do. As soon as a punch is blocked, boom, react. Counter, react, counter, react. That's what he has to do. Camacho coming out of this eye thing pretty well. Yeah, well, Camacho, look, look at that, look at the feet. He, he rode, he rode Camacho back on his foot. I mean, this is gonna be a problem all night long. This guy's too tall and Camacho's too short. Less than 30 seconds, round four. Nice crisp right hand by Trinidad. The kind he's got to put in to do the damage. When Camacho starts to get Trinidad's timing and rhythm down a little bit, it'll be interesting to see how his straight left hands, if they start landing, affect Trinidad. Nice right hand by Trinidad. And Camacho goes flaring back. His eye immediately closed up, but now it is wide open. And it affects your vision, too. You know, it hurts like hell, and, it, and it's double vision. Probably just got his eyelashes poked back in there for a little bit. Yeah. All right. Round number five, scheduled for 12 for the IBF Welterweight Championship. Felix Trinidad in the white trunks with the red trim. He's the champion. Sterling Camacho bringing his considerable skills. I haven't seen him this sharp in a long time. But this kid does not look impressed. Felix looks like he's just looking to land his bombs. Camacho told us he feels as sharp as ever and very strong at 147. And then against Chavez, he lost some steam because he had to lose weight. He says in retrospect, he should have used more lateral movement, but he says the Chavez fight didn't take anything out of him. Something we really haven't talked about a lot is that this is at 147. As blazing fast as Camacho's always been, the ability he's had to punch whatever it may be is at 140 and below. So he hasn't had a lot of competition this strong at 147. We're going to see in the later rounds how that strength affects him. Camacho won the WBC Junior Lightweight title in 83, the WBC Lightweight title in 85, and the WBO Junior Welterweight title in 89. His goal is to win a fourth title and then beat Chavez in a rematch. But he's got to get by Felix Trinidad. Nice counter left hand by Camacho there. Trinidad broke, drove him into the ropes with a nice right hand. Bounced off, got his own left hand home. Yeah, the, the pace is heating up. Felix is heating up the pace, and he's willing to eat some counter punches to do it. And of course, Macho doesn't miss many chances to counter punch, so this is getting to be very, very interesting. Right now, Trinidad doing something that I like when I, when I have to work with South Wales, and that's a nice lead right hand with a left hook counter, either to the head or body. And uh, right there, saw another nice, nice body shot landed, and Camacho doing his hold on thing. Camacho will hold on. I mean, he shows you when he's hurt. He grabs. There's no question about it. He's not embarrassed to do that. So you know when he's hurt. Coming back with two hooks in counterpunch. Trinidad, as Bobby was talking about, a natural welterweight for Macho isn't. Felix Sr., the trainer for Felix Jr., feels his son and pupil can knock out Camacho. You will see Trinidad as a junior middleweight and not too far down the road because right now I know he's having trouble at 147. I've heard that from a number of people. Again, Again he's on his foot. And uh, Camacho stumbles as a result. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know about that. Holding and hitting. Holding and hitting. One point deducted. Uh-oh. He's had a lot of trouble with him even at the, end of the, at the end of the rounds when they're holding. He won't let go even if the Cortez says break. Therefore, the point. In, in a fight that's this close, that is a big one. They have now been at it for five rounds, and I've got it pretty even. 
I've got a dead even. I had the yeah. first two Camacho, the next two Trinidad. The last round, I thought Trinidad edge until they took the point away. Exactly. So 46-46, and we both went to the same school. So things really getting interesting now. Again, twice Felix put his foot right on top of uh, Camacho's foot. It doesn't seem to bother Camacho. I'll say that. For The only difference is the ebb and flow of this. Looks like Felix is gaining steam, is chasing him harder and harder, and uh, Felix is running more and more. And in the eyes of the judge, this is a champion chasing the challenge. It's called ring generalship, aggression, and uh, sometimes the points go to the champion who's doing the chase. Felix Trinidad pressing to the attack. He's gaining confidence with each round that Camacho not only can't hurt him, but that he can reach Camacho and hurt Camacho. Camacho backing away, looking to avoid those stiff punches. Exactly what Felix has got to do. He's got to make him feel the kind of power he's got, even if he hits just gloves. As Bobby pointed out, sometimes that goes right through the gloves and hits you on the head with your own gloves. Well, he's got to do that. He's got to make Felix, I mean, oh, nice shot by Camacho. He's got to make Camacho feel like, hey, this guy can really back. Not only that, but when you have your left hand in his face and he's got his gloves up, you're keeping him from hitting him. His hands are where they need to be to protect him. Bobby, do you think Trinidad has solved the southpaw style of Hector Camacho, but Camacho landing now. Yeah, he solved a lot of it, but again, he could get careless. He could do a lot of different things that go along with being an inexperienced champion and prideful young man that he is. He's got a lot solved, and there's going to be a few things that are not solved. There you go. We'll see what Hector decides he's going to do, because I think that's key. The thing is, the, the urgency, the aggression of the champion. I mean, he keeps coming, and, and as far as the cut is concerned, it has pretty well subsided. They've done a good job. Uh, Macho has not been hitting it with a jab, so it doesn't open more. All in all, it looks like the tide is turning in favor of Felix Trinidad, the champion. Great defense by Camacho. I'll tell you, I think right now as the fight is laying out, Camacho's getting the short end of most of the exchanges. And the fight could very well be a close decision loss. But we've seen some very strange draw, draw, draws on, on fights over the years, and I wouldn't be real surprised. We saw one today. That's pretty strong. I thought they were very respectful for Joe Cortez. He usually has some nasty words. And now let's see what's happening in the corner with, that looks to have the fight in control. Oh, that might have been the toughest punch of the night. Yeah, when he had to hit him in the, in the mouth. Floor. But he looks so calm and cool and composed for 21 years of age. Felix Trinidad as we head into round nine. I didn't see who slapped him. I know his father's in the corner. I don't think that was his day. Break, break. Joe Cortez is looking closely at this holding, and I guarantee you, I would lay the odds 100 to 1 right now. There will be a point taken away from Camacho. This is going to get evened up in the point department. And that's a great way to do it. The sharp, fast Trinidad stalking Camacho now. But Camacho holds on. And the crowd again will boo. Did Muhammad Ali win his third world championship doing that? Hitting and holding, and then when he backed up, leaving that left hand out there for some more? Yeah, but he did a lot of things <laughs> longer in his career. You have, to, you have to say what stage he was in. I mean, you know, he, he had different stages. Camacho is receiving some long, cold stares from Joe Cortez right now. He better be careful. Again, with the foot, almost every round has had the foot problem. And, it, and it's never Camacho's foot on top of Trinidad. So it's Trinidad on top of Camacho. Trinidad slowed down just a pinch in this round. Camacho's got to land a few more straight lefts. Uh, not real effective, but landing. Trinidad is.
is a knockout artist. As I mentioned, third highest knockout ratio of all present world champions, 86%. He's got nine straight, 19 knockouts and 22 wins, no losses. Whoa, body shots by Trinidad. Styles, Styles. That's, what, that's all Lou Rodriguez sh shot. A hard right by Trinidad that rocked Camacho. Camacho's gonna hold on now. You watch this point get close. I know, he's, he said it again. He's, he's talking about it. I don't know how many more times he's gotta say it. What does he need, carbon paper? Trinidad, all kinds of confidence now, dancing around, looking for the opening. And avoiding... Here it comes. No, he didn't do it again. Boy, he sure is patient. Again, the pursuit goes on, the champion on the on the hunt. Camacho retreating. Can't win the championship that way in my book. And we're going into the dressing room of Julio Cesar Chavez. A staggering 89-0-1 with 77 knockouts, a record 26-0-1 with 19 knockouts in world championship fights, getting ready to defend against Frankie Randall, tough veteran tonight, his 13th defense of the title, five world championships in three different weight categories over his fabulous 13-plus year career. That's next on the docket here at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas. And Bobby, did you expect anything different in this? I mean, did you expect, I know you like Camacho here in an upset, but did you expect this kid to be this good and Camacho to be this bad? And I don't mean bad, I mean he's just not effective. Well, what I, I expected him to at certain points be this ineffective because I knew that Trinidad was strong and going to force this, but I expected him to be a little more effective in a lot of areas, frustrate Trinidad, land more cleanly, and just be better. Well, it's certainly going to be interesting to see what the scoring is going to be. We've had some really creative scoring here. I've, I've got him ahead. 86 to 82. What do you got, Bob? I believe I have an 86 to 83. And you know, it's uh, right now it doesn't appear as if either fighter has got the ability to knock the other out. Camacho is always going to hold, run, dodge. Bob, we hold. Uh, if they take a uh, if they take a round away from him at this point, he can kiss a goodbye. It won't help his case. Take a point away right now. On a counter punch, left oh, hand goes to the and right, holding right, again. Right, look, look, look. He's waltzing he's, because he got he got in trouble. He got in trouble. Time called by Joe Cortez. There's the point, Bobby. But he got in trouble. His legs went crazy, and he, he, he held on. I'll tell you what, it's a lesser of two evils right now. Now yep. we talked about it before, but that 147 pounds, he's not getting hit by 140 pounders anymore. Can he withstand the onslaught of this young man? He's going to hold on again, and now he's going to keep doing it. And now he spins Trinidad around, hearing it again from the crowd. Camacho. He got hit. He got hit hard, and his legs wobbled on him. That's when he grabbed him. Well, he's got to back that up and take a look at that and replay because something hit him very hard. Joe Cortez, or no Joe Cortez, he wasn't a, about to let loose. This now becomes a 10-8 round. You take one point away, and uh, you'd have to do some creative uh, adding and subtracting to give this fight to Camacho thus far all the way here in the 10th round. Let me hasten to add, you can negate the scores by knocking your opponent out. Look, look at the grab. Look, look, look. What is he going to do? Take another point, Bobby? Camacho's in trouble. What a clean fight, said Joe Cortez. He said, you keep doing that, but he never finished the set. Well, be because he's in trouble. Camacho Camacho's in trouble, and here's the place it comes, into the corner, and a hole. He's going to be disqualified if he continues to do that. You can see Cortez trying oh, to give Camacho, man, every benefit. 
Doesn't want to disqualify him. He may not have to as Trinidad loads up. Oh, big trouble for Hector Camacho Camacho as this young guy has got he the He might right. go down for the first time. Camacho first needs that rest. He needs that corner. He's got 25 seconds to go. And he doesn't get that corner, I'll tell you what. This fight could be over. This kid is coming on like a cavalry charge. That's what this kid is. And we keep calling him a kid. He's not. He's a man. He is a champion. He is a killer instinct champion. Well, he's going to last this round anyway. Let's go. Get some feeling in him. Well, he is behind now. He is behind no matter who's keeping score right now. Here we go, round 11. Felix Trinidad looking to end it. Against a man who has never tasted the canvas, Hector Camacho. Felix Trinidad's first trip past 10 rounds. So uncharted territory doesn't seem to mind. And he continues his pursuit of the Macho Man. And Camacho just keeping his distance, trying to avoid those lethal punches of Trinidad. He is in a survival mode. Exactly. This is Bobby. not to win now, now it's to survive. Now it's hurt, he doesn't have it, this is to survive. This is to, to make it to 12, just like he did with Chavez. He's, he's taking his beating, now he's gonna make it to 12. He's just not taking as much punishment as was dished out by Chavez. But he is feeling the effects. And yet he appeared more hurt and more out of it. Did he though? Oh, no earlier. Trinidad could get a little sloppy now and start lunging, but the thing is, Camacho might not have the power to knock him out. He's never been a knockout puncher, but he's always been quick. Timing could be something here, you can never tell. I don't think Macho wants to even take the chance of throwing a good hard punch. He looks like he is what you just correctly said, a survival mode. This is a round to survive, clear his head. He doesn't mind blowing it as long as he doesn't get knocked out. If Trinidad does have a knockout punch, it's a left hook, but he also has a wicked right hand. Break, break. This guy has power in either hand. I mean, he is a good, hard puncher, and he also punishes the body. We saw that against Maurice Blocker. And Luis Garcia. And for having such an innocent baby face, he's got the killer instinct of Rocky Graziano, Rocky Marciano, all those tough guys with ugly faces. And Rocky Balboa. Pace slowing. Again, we're in survival mode. He's not going to make the fight any more exciting, but he's through another round. He's going to survive. He's a prideful human being. He's, he's a fighter that absolutely will not quit, but here he knows he can't win it. I think he feels it. I think he senses it. But he doesn't want to get stopped. It's a matter of pride now. Well, it's turned into a foot race now, and round 11 over. Sade is his uh, manager who thinks he'll be a superstar someday as they touch gloves. 12th hey, round. Emil Sade told me he's going to knock this guy out, and then he's going to beat uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, and that's the program they got. It's a little too early in the game to talk about Julio Cesar Chavez in my book. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a little premature for that one. Yeah. But I can't believe they've got Camacho winning in that corner. Well, we, let's not say anything until we hear what the judges think. Remember, we're in Las Vegas. We have had surprises in Las Vegas. And don't forget, the corner will say just about anything short of do it or your mom will die. You know? They will try anything to implore the fighter in the final seconds of a fight to do whatever he has to pull it out. This is it. It's three minutes. What else can go wrong? If they can give this, if they can give this running retreat to uh, Hector Camacho in the decision, give him the championship, then they are truly charitable cases. And blind as well. Can't see it. Yeah, I don't know about charity. I mean, blind would be better. I mean, you just cannot win a championship going away, holding, getting penalized for holding. 
I have Trinidad comfortably ahead. And he doesn't need to force the fight here. He just doesn't have to make any mistakes. He, he, he stays could, he, could, he can lose this round and still be so far ahead. He's got change coming. Oh, yeah, he can get knocked down and still have change left over. This could be the first time he goes 12 rounds. Great. Felix Trinidad. I think Macho has, has paid the price of wasting his talent on high life and not having the energy that he needs. You can't just keep playing that high life and have it not come back and home. Body shots again by Felix Trinidad. It's just not there. Camacho has thrown in the proverbial towel, but he's going to stay on his feet. He wants to finish this one on his feet. The last uh, three or four rounds have been clearly survival mode for Camacho. You have to say Camacho for all of the uh, faults that he has, is a prideful man, as Bobby said, and he has, in the ring, always tried to survive at least a 12. He just won't, won't quit. Well, and so let's, we, let's give him that. We saw the ultimate uh, case with Chavez. Right. Yeah, well, let's give him that. You know, we've seen a lot of fighters stay past their welcome. I certainly hope I don't do it. I, I it broke my heart to watch Sugar Ray when he got oh, beat up by Norris. Hector's demonstrating maybe he's past his welcome. Yeah. The, the only difference is he showed a lot of courage and fortitude, more so against Chavez. His stock actually went up in losing to Chavez as opposed to tonight. Yeah, because up to that point, they, he just never showed up for a fight. I mean, in that fight, at least he took the In this fight, he's just running. I'm convinced something's wrong. Something contributed to this terrible performance. The Macho Man is still better than what we see tonight. It's over, and the resume is that the champion maintains it as far as Bobby Chez and Ferdy Pacheco and Steve Albert are concerned. Let us see what we find out from the judges in this hinky-dinky world of life. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing here at the MGM Grand Garden, we have a unanimous decision, and I will read the score totals. Judge at ringside, Glenn Hamada, scores the bout 116-110. Mike Gliena scores the bout 117-109. Dolby Shirley scores the bout 119-106. All three in favor of the winner, and still champion, Felix Tito Trinidad. So there it is across the board, a unanimous decision for 21-year-old Felix Trinidad. He retains his IBF welterweight title, goes to 23-0.